Hello, everyone. This is Jackie Schwab back with the Press Bay Lifestyle Inspired Podcast. It's a podcast that does interviews with people like Dana on topics to help our listeners, that's you, find the resources, tools, and support to help them be their best inspired self. How are you today, Dana? I am doing well. You're doing the well? The sun is out. You know what? The sun is out here too. Um, so I live in Wisconsin. I think you said yeah. you're from Minnesota. How's the weather over there for you guys? It is still really cold, but it's beautiful. So you think it's warm outside. Yeah, so. it's sneaky, right? So I was yeah. sitting on my way home, on my way to take the children to school this morning. The car said it was nine degrees when we left. We couldn't even get the CD player to work. That's how old my car is. I have a CD player. Um, and every stoplight we hit, the temperature went down. It was like nine, eight, seven, six. By the time we got to school, it was five. My daughter, my oldest was like, oh my gosh, it's so cold, mom. I'm like, I know. We chose Wisconsin. I don't know why, but. <laughs> it keeps the spiders and snakes out, so. This that's is what true. I, that's what my I tell daughter. myself yeah. every winter, so. I, I can, I'm going to tell my daughter that she's petrified of spiders and they're dead right now. So that's good. You got to use what you can. Exactly. Exactly. So, um, I just love what you're doing. Um, it's near and dear to my heart. I actually spent the last three years building a software application called MindLight to help family caregivers who are trying to take care of uh, special needs children and or aging parents. I found myself in that position where I had one, well, a couple on each side, um, children that were not special needs, but special needs, and then aging parents. And so as a certified wellness professional and caregiver, it sounds like that's kind of an area familiar to you. Yes. I have been a massage therapist for 20 years. And I, early on in my career, I was doing some hospice and I had some family and friends who you know, I was on their end of life teams. Uh, I have, I have a daughter who has brain injury. So that, you know, that wasn't where I started, but that's where I ended up. And it's a whole different lifestyle of dealing with those things and layering on there. So I had to find different coping mechanisms and different ways to be. Yeah. Different ways to be. I, um, a lot of people in the caregiving space, so uh, I was affiliated with caregiving.com for a long time. They're kind of the Midwest, a Midwest organization that helps family caregivers. And we often say like caregivers take breaks different than other people. Yeah. Right? We yes. don't just get to go like, all right, I'm going to go take a bath. And then your kid like <laughs> loses their brain, right? right. Um, my daughter, for whatever reason, she's good a lot. And then no one knows why. And she starts screaming like crazy. And that means you get out of the bath. <laughs> cause, cause wow, you know, we've had knives flying across the room. We've had coffee that got spilled. We've had flour everywhere. We've had, oh, um, foundation does not come off most things. <laughs> we've had like liquid foundation. So you've learned that. So that's, you know, life lessons. I think you know, initially when you're going into special needs or any caregiving, it's, things happen to everybody. You know, it's, it's like my daughter. She was, one of my frustrations years ago was, you know, she wet the bed. She still wished she wet the bed. I was, playing, you know, you know, and, you know, I went and talked to some friends and they're like, well, you know, they're toddlers. And I'm like, my daughter's 12 years old. You know, it's, it, it and I was speaking to my daughter and it's, my daughter's daughter and it's it, the frequency and the intensity of special needs parenting and even in the caregiving role is different in the care you know out in popular pop culture pop culture i guess or you know there's a common belief is you make your the life you want okay when you're a caregiver you didn't choose that yes you can always walk away but you're not going to so you can't get into that frame of, I'm choosing this, but you have to be able to manage through it and be able to thrive in that role. So, I agree. Uh, so a lot of times when I would talk to my well-intentioned friends are like, you choose your life. And I'm like, that aren't going to stop working with you. 
you know, so it's, but it's a different layer. It's, we deal with a different, we deal with frequency and we deal with intensity. Most typical families, and realistically, there isn't a typical family, understand some of what we're going through. You know, and we can understand some of theirs, but, you know, I never imagined calling the police on my child. I have. You know, we had to for her safety, for, the, you know, but it was when you're out at your, you know, other child's soccer game or something, that's not something you're going to bring up. You know, yeah. and how do you manage your reality with everyone else's and keeping your brain together? Yeah. I was one of the things that um, I, I do talk about actually, because I feel like if we don't talk about it, it keeps coming about and there aren't people like us out there to, to have conversations, but um, it's all fun and games until it's frequency and intensity are huge. Right. So my daughter is eight and she's amazing and lovely and sweet and she still craps her pants. Right. right. So we have poop art from an eight year old size poop, which is not nearly as insignificant as the two-year-old poop art. Both are gross, but some bigger gross, you know? Yeah. And, or if you're helping with the, if you're like, my mom has um, emphysema really bad and there's some sticky, icky stuff there. That's not necessarily things that other people are dealing with daily. Um, and it's, I think it does matter though, how you show up in your head because right. I say the difference between family caregiver and a for like a child caregiving is we're for, we have to for, we're a forever caregiver. Right. It's not going to end of life, right? There's not going to be an end for us. There's just going to be an extension, and we're going to get older, and they're going to get bigger. Right. And but you're also planning out five, ten years because yeah. we're okay. Any parent, especially mothers, are very good at seeing ahead of what could happen. Special needs parents and other caregivers need to do that because you, there's a cascade effect. But we're also planning for our deaths, but not, it's not just like, who, what possessions are we splitting up? It, who's gonna take care of my daughter? Who's gonna take care of, you know? And my other daughter knows that she will most likely be guardian of my other dog, you know, and it's, it's a different reality and it's not bad. It's not, but it's different and you have to take care of yourself. And so often what I found is, you know, I think because I'm a massage therapist, people, that's where people go take a break. You know, they try and renew and revitalize in the massage room. And, you know, I started seeing a lot of special needs and a lot of caregivers because I get the lifestyle. But what I'm trying to do with Vantage Caregiving Coaching is get there before burnout, get there before mm -hmm. the tears, get there before, you know, everything's falling apart. Because you are a central figure in your child's or in your... I should back that in your loved one's life. You have to be able to thrive and it's nurturing yourself to do that. And what I saw in a lot of, you know, because you have special needs groups, you have uh, with different conditions, you have support groups and they all say self-care, self-care, self-care. You got to practice self-care. So what is it? You know, and I work with I work best with people one-on-one, -on -one, a lot of times with Zoom here, because frankly, we're not going to be able to go out for coffee unless you're going in between therapies. Yeah. yeah. You know, and reformulating how you're going to find joy and how you're going to take care of yourself. You know, and for each person, it's different. It might be physical. It might be nutritional. It might be, you know, just picking up a hobby you had or seeing it in a different way. And so often when we get in the caregiver role and frankly, probably everybody experiences, but you drill down and this is all you see. And what I've experienced, I mean, especially on the 
caregiving side and the special needs side is when people are trying to talk through their problems with their families and friends who don't understand the situation and haven't lived it, they're in shock of, oh my God, you're, I don't know, oh my gosh, you're still dealing with this and I can't even imagine that life versus, okay, yeah, I get that. Okay, let's drill down to the real problem. Yeah, it's a different reality. I would agree. I know um, part of it is like you almost get embarrassed of the continued shock. Like, oh my gosh, really? Yeah. What do you mean, real? Like, this is my everyday. So you even forget that your everyday is so much not like the rest of the universe. Or people want to go, they're like, why do you never come with us for coffee? Or why don't you ever go to, we used to have women's night out, we used to this. And when you rare time that you get to go, it's great. But I think they think we're flaky sometimes. And oh. it's more just, we really, really have to prioritize. Right. <laughs> Every There's, moment is unique. Right. Or sometimes I found myself being perceived as uninterested. And it, like when people are sharing their athletic, you know, children and they're getting good grades and all that stuff. And I'm working with my with this daughter where I'm like, well, she can read at a, she ran the stop sign. So that was good. <laughs> yeah, we did the same thing. I remember um, my daughter didn't talk for a while until she was a little older. Her first word wasn't mama, of course. I don't know why. It was bird. I was like a beyond, th I didn't think she was going to ever speak. And she's like, starts with bird. And I'm so excited. And other people just couldn't, get they couldn't match the excitement like they're like oh great your three-year-old said bird okay <laughs> and i'm like yeah. you don't understand this is like huge luckily right. we have um a lot of therapists that we stayed in touch with and friends that are as thrilled as we are but it's definitely um yeah i i know i have three other children okay i have, have two other children yeah and so i have old two older and one younger. Um, so I appreciate other people's good news too. Uh, I just, my good news for my one child is different. It's different right. kinds of news, you know. But, but you almost become, you know, introverted about it where you don't always share it. I mean, you, yeah. can, you find your circles, you can share it in. So, so. that's, so is that something that, um, so as a professional um, and in the Vantage caregiving, being a caregiving coach, do you work with caregivers to sort of like, what do you try to help them do that's, that's helpful? I, I basically have three services. I have one where we're designing, it's an ongoing program about six meetings of it, you know, and we're helping design basically a self-care regimen what works for them you know and so it's more multifaceted i have mastermind sessions which are that just one thing where i need frequently with with special needs it's where like with ieps you know they're just hitting a full stop or you know even with caregiving it's where it's frankly when crap hits the uh, fan what when crap hits the fan you know and it's like oh my god it, it, and it's more than an oh my gosh moment it is everything is coming at you and you can't right now because you have to see your way through it you know and that's the mastermind session where we're you know okay so this is i i had a a client from canada who she's a good example of this is where she had a good support system. She had, it was a life, it was a uh, end of life, but it was a more, it's not like we have six weeks, it's we have six months, you know, and how she's getting through it. And, you know, she had a very good self care system. And in talking through it with her, she was a chef. You know, she has all these people bringing her meals. And I mean, it presented as a, she, you know, she, she just didn't know what to do. And through further talking, we were, I was able to get some things that brought her enjoyment. 
and you, you can't travel. You can't, you know, you can't, she's not going to go out to restaurants. She's not, you know, she has a lot of friends bringing her meals. And then one thing she said, she goes, and I miss cooking. You know, so we, and I said, wait a minute, you miss cooking. So why can't you have, why don't you have your friend, why don't you find the recipe, send out the shopping list and have them bring that, you know, and that's how she was able to navigate the last few months, not I'm not saying that cooking is the answer. It was for her. It, it was, was for her. Where she was able to find those moments of joy and enjoyment. And she was able to go to her husband who was dying and enjoy those moments, you know, versus frequently you, know, you have the laundry, you have the medication, you have the doctors, you have, and you're like, oh, and I need to spend time with my loved one and I need to make it count. You know, she was able to find those moments of grounding to do that with her husband. Yeah, and I think as, as you having been through so many of these yourself and living the lifestyle, um, you have a lot of uh, experience to, 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 to pull from to say, well, all right, here's 75 different ways we've tried to make this work. Let's see if one of those happens to right. work for you, right? Yes. Yeah. So. so you said three services. So you have the ongoing self-care, oh. the mastermind, and what's the third? And then we have the venting session. And this is by far my most popular. And it it got put there like a joke because somebody was like, well, what if I just want to vent? And I'm like, okay, if you want to call me up and vent, I'll do it. But, you know, that's about 70% of my clients is huh. they call me up and they vent. And I'm not going to judge them. I'm not going to sit there and go, Oh my gosh, I can't even believe, imagine that lifestyle because <laughs> I can't imagine it. And, and then I typically will send a follow up email. You know, I suspect many of them never open it. And, you know, that's, and some people do. I had a client who came, who reached out to me two months after we had, we had like three or four venting sessions. And, you know, she goes, I finally opened up that email. And I was able to put things into a different perspective. So it did help her. But it also helps to vent because I think, as we were talking about before, a lot, a lot of people don't quite understand the lifestyle. And they don't understand that you, you're doing fine. Everything's going fine. And all of a sudden, something happens and your life turns 180 in a day where... And your whole family does that. You know, it was it was in, enlightening to me as my oldest daughter recently moved into a group home. You know, and we thought we're handling all of this. And it was, we were in shell shock for like three weeks. And we're like, wait a minute. <laughs> we're not watching everything we're doing because we have triggers, things would trigger her. And it would be a yelling, she would scream at us for two hours. And this was normal. So it's almost too quiet sometimes, right? It's like getting used to that new vibe. So our daughter's younger, but she gets triggered by like loud noise or or something sad on YouTube make her cry. And and she's little enough now where you can handle the like physical outbursts. Right. Right. But at a certain point when she's 12 or 16 or you know it's it's a different thing and um I just I do remember talking to other parents and they just like I would never let my kid do that I'm like yeah I, I dare you go ahead and try to make her stop but I'll, I will pay you yeah, <laughs> yeah. I think you can make this work yeah, I also found that caregivers I mean at first I thought it was special needs but now I know it's universal with caregivers our sense of humor is way different yeah, we're a little morbid. <laughs> like poop collages. I think that's super funny, be but like not everyone does. <laughs> but I don't know what else to call it. So it's just like poop art, you know, whatever. Yeah. <laughs> so, yeah. But I mean, what I'm, I've done several seminars for different organizations, or not seminars, workshops, where we talk as a group. And, you know, it's interesting for people and one of the activities I go through is helping them figure out what they, what they used to think was fun and yeah. how, to manage, how to bring that into your life now. 
So. Yeah, I think you do. I think you forget that you're always doing for others. Right. You just, you just do, right? Like they say a lot of like moms make it through because they know that there's a, there's a, eventually the littles get bigger, right? Right. And you're like, how do you do it? And you're like, ah, you just do, right? You right. go without sleep, but there's an end. And right. that's, I think the difference is you kick in like every other mom, right? Every other female or every dad, there's some good caregivers out there that I mentioned, right. but we kick in the way that everyone else does. But the problem is there's no throttle down, right? right. It's like, that's the way it's going to keep being. Right. And, and that's why they burn. The first few years. And yeah. then you hit, you know, it's, I actually found myself in my journey is it would be every few years where I like throttle down and do everything and we're getting through this. And then I just hit a wall and you just have to sit back and figure it out. I mean, well, you're figuring out your child's life and your family's life and your extended family's life because life isn't stopping. Yeah. Yeah. Life doesn't stop while life happens, right? It's kind of this right. 22. <clears throat> well, this is, uh, thank you so much for taking the time to explain all of this. So I love, so it's Vantage Caregiving, Caregiver, right? And you Vantage guys, Caregiver.com. Yes. Dot com, and you guys do three, uh, three services, your ongoing self-care, your mastermind sessions, and your very popular venting sessions, yeah. which I think that's super cool. And um, anything I else? Also like am Sorry, I'm also beginning to do some more talks where, you know, I'll go into groups. So I'm not quite re at that speaker level, and that's more my anxiety. Than <laughs> uh, you'll get there. I think as we keep building up, right? It's, yep. But it's wonderful what you're doing. I, I do think that caregiving, like, like any other, you know, chronic thing, it can be lonely, right? Yes. It's very lonely. And you can start wondering if you're doing the right thing or if you even know what you're doing. Um, and just having another person there that says, no, you're not crazy. Yes, this is super hard. But now that you're done acknowledging that, what can we do? Like, what, right. what can we do to get out of the stuck? But um, also holding you or, or challenging you going, what are you doing for yourself? We know you're not going to take a two-week vacation, but what are you doing right now? We always joke when we were little. It was a funny, it was, I don't know if it's a joke. See, again, our humor, but it's like, oh, I can't wait till I get to go to the bathroom by myself, right? Well, <laughs> my kids are like six, eight, 10, and 14. And um, once in a while, I'll get, I'll get some time alone, but I'm still in the bathroom with kids all the time because, you know, she needs support there. And I'm like, oh, life with a, life is just different for us. Right. It's just different. So I guess I'm not looking forward to peeing alone anymore. I have to have a new goal. <laughs> yeah, you might want to do some, you know. Yeah, I don't now know, it's a bath. The bathroom by brought you joy, but we'll need to figure it that out. Now it's a bath. Now I, I'm like looking because my daughter's getting too big for us both to fit in the bathtub. So I'm like, <laughs> you're gonna have to figure out how to. You could be in the bathtub by yourself because mommy could totally use some bathtub time. <laughs> We're working on it. We're gonna get there. Good. Yeah. Well, it was so nice. I'm so glad you took the time out. I know your your crazy lifestyle. I know how it is. And I'm so glad that you spent the time with us. And I look forward to maybe we'll get to talk again and, and see how things are going for you. Your, yes. your talks and your upcoming speeches. I'm sure they'll be great. All right. Thank thanks you. so much. Thank you. Bye.